the issue of whether the federal government should pay risk corridor payments to insurance companies was back in court. This time, the U.S. Supreme Court. At issue is the billions of dollars that the federal government owes insurance companies as envisioned in the Affordable Care Act. You might recall that the individual mandate of the Affordable Care Act that says everybody has to have insurance or pay a penalty also came with some risk stabilization measures, risk corridors, risk adjustment, and reinsurance to make sure that if an insurance company had a particularly sick risk pool, they would be compensated for that, whereas some of the healthier risk pools would pay into the federal government to help support those payments. This was a way that if everybody has to have insurance, it was recognized that some people who haven't had insurance in a long time may not be particularly healthy, and no one insurance company's risk pool would be perfectly balanced. So this was a way to spread some of that risk, to pay into the federal government if you had a healthier group, and receive some federal money if you had a sicker group. Now this was simply just to cushion insurance companies against either extreme losses or buffer against extreme gains and even things out a little bit, and it was meant to be temporary. It was called that three-legged stool of risk stability in the marketplace. Like we said, risk adjustment, risk corridor, and reinsurance. Now, profitable insurers were to pay the feds their share of any money um, that was then to go to those insurers that were losing money. And early on, not enough money was coming into the federal government from some of those healthier pools. So instead of just making do and taking money out of the Department of Health and Human Services budget like they wanted to, they just didn't pay. The federal government never paid those insurance companies with the risky, sicker pool. Congress refused to allow the shifting of funds from the Health and Human Services budget. So that's where things sat for a little while until insurance companies got together and sued, and they were seeking $12 billion. Lower courts on this issue actually split, and an appeals court last summer actually concluded that there was technically an obligation to pay the insurance companies, but because of some additional congressional riders, no money was owed. This was appealed, as you would expect, to the U.S. Supreme Court, who heard oral arguments on December 10th, and the arguments went quite well for those in favor of the risk corridor payments. Some journalists were actually calling this a pretty good day for Obamacare in the courts. Now, the federal government argued it didn't have to pay the money. Uh, the Republican-controlled Congress stripped away most of the funding in 2014, and only Congress can appropriate money under the law, and therefore no money is owed. But profitable insurance companies are still paying in under this system, and attorneys for the insurance industry in front of the Supreme Court called this a bait and switch. If Congress can say, yeah, you, we're going we're gonna to compensate you if you take these people on as clients, and then they don't compensate you, but other insurance companies that are profitable are still paying in, they called that a bait and switch. The justices themselves appear to agree that the rider, that congressional rider, did not eliminate the government's original obligation to pay. The Affordable Care Act says the government shall pay. That's the language of the law. The government shall pay the insurance companies these risk corridor payments. It doesn't say they shall pay contingent on the appropriations that come in. And Congress has the ability when they're writing laws to include that condition language. The Affordable Care Act did not have that language. So like we said, what's at stake? 12 billion in outstanding payments. And here's the argument that was persuasive with some of the more conservative justices on the court. Trust that the government would be a reliable business partner in the private sector. That was the argument that at the end of the day had Justice Kavanaugh, one of the newest members of the Supreme Court and one of the more conservative justices, saying that he's worried about what the ruling in this decision could mean for future business partners with the government. If we were to rule for you, he said, everyone will be on notice going forward, private parties in Congress itself, that shall pay doesn't obligate actual payments. And he was worried about that precedent. He said, if we're going to have good business partners moving forward, we can't renege on the contracts that we write. And in this instant, the contract is really the law itself. Now, what's next? We wait for a Supreme Court decision. It's expected in the spring of 2020. Now, we're also going to keep an eye on the cost sharing reduction litigation. It looks really similar. The logic is statutory requirements for paying insurers, just like we saw at issue in the risk corridor paid case, and that 
cost sharing reduction payment case, it's working its way through the courts right now with no final decision yet set. So you can read more on this case. It's called Maine Community Health Options versus United States. We link to it in the description below. As we learn more, should the Supreme Court rule on this, or if we have movement on the cost sharing reduction payment case, we will bring you an update, so make sure you subscribe.